everybody. Paul Taubman here with 9.connects. Thank you very much for joining us here today. You are in the right place if you are here for our webinar on Altium Designer, SolidWorks, PCB, and the big picture. So before we begin, just want to let you know about our questions. Feel free to write those questions in the questions panel. It comes along with the panel that you get with your go-to webinar. Um, and by the way, if you want to write them in at any point in time, feel free to do so. My colleague Christopher Che is also um, listening in on here, though he's on mute. He sees those questions and he can assist you um, as we're going about. If there's some questions, we may hold off until the end because we may want everybody to hear those. And of course, at the end, too, you can feel free to provide those questions and we'll answer them in real time. If we can't do it, we will definitely answer those questions through a follow-up email. And if we get enough uh, you know, really great questions, we'll certainly put together a Q&A sheet for you. So want to make sure that your questions do get answered today or in the very near future. So I want to start off with an expectation that if you were looking for a play-by-play -play of the features today, uh, that's not the purpose of this. Okay? We know that these sheets and these other uh, follow-up videos in the future will probably deal with these play-by-play -play features here, but there's a bigger story that we want to tell you here, and that's what we're going to focus on. So well, let's start off with a polling question just to make sure you're all there, awake and alive and kicking. Uh, it's a question that we have in regards to uh, MCAT, uh, Mechanical Computer Aided Design. So we're going to bring that uh, poll over there, and you can take a look at that. And it looks like 45% of you guys are saying that you feel that you're novice in it, 32% feel like you're intermediate, 10% uh, feeling like that you're an expert and 13% you just simply don't use one. So that's kind of some interesting numbers over there, but that's not really too surprising. Most of us who are on the electrical side of things uh, tend to stay on the electrical side and the mechanical area unless that's a, uh, one of your uh, job features or um, one of the things that you have to do for your job uh, that a lot of times we don't seem to wander into that area. But what we're going to see today is that I think there is really a need for us on the electrical side to do that. And of course, if you're on the mechanical side, we also see a need for you guys to also wander over to the electrical side as well. And that's the story that's going to be unfolding as we go through this webinar here. So I want to talk about uh, SolidWorks PCB first, just to let everybody know to make it kind of official here, that on June 2nd, on 2017, 9 dot Connects became the national VAR for SolidWorks PCB. So that was, we did send out an announcement, we're not sure if everybody got that, but we'll make that very clear to everyone here that we are now their national VAR. And we're very honored by that because SolidWorks, as, as a rule of thumb, generally does not allow a VAR to become uh, nationwide. But they saw the value that we brought to this, and they said, look, you know, we want you to um, take this bull by the horns and help us out with it, and that's why we're here. And by the way, this is not a decision that we made very lightly. We've been in discussion with SolidWorks for well over a year discussing this and how this is going to work and why we, uh, how we're going to approach these type of things here with it. Okay? So I think a bigger question is, who is DeSo? Because a lot of times we throw out the word SolidWorks and a lot of times we throw out this word DeSo. DeSo is the parent company of SolidWorks. It's a, actually a huge company. It's a three plus billion dollar company and they are a major player in 3D mechanical and simulation. So mechanical, obviously, through their solid works, but they do a lot of 3D stuff as well. And just to give you a really quick example, uh, when I had an opportunity to go to their headquarters in, I think, Walden, Mass, uh, they had this tool that they were showing. It was a 3D tool for master planning of urban centers. So if you're in a densely populated area and you want to put up a high-rise building and you want to know how much power it's going to consume, or how much HVAC that you need to put in, or, or whatever you need to do in order to get the the, uh, the the facilities of that to operate. They have this 3D capability, so it can show you where the sun is going to be, where the shadows are going to be throughout the year, what areas are going to need heating, what areas might need more cooling, and so on and so forth, and how it's going to impact the other buildings around it as well. So these are the kind of things that these guys are getting into. They're way beyond just simple uh, electronic components, right, these 3D step files, they do these kind of things. And their simulation tools are also very advanced as well. There's 12 divisions in DeSo. SolidWorks is obviously the one that most of us have heard of. In here, even on the electrical side, even if you've never touched a mechanical tool before, I got to believe almost everybody at one point or another has heard of the term SolidWorks, and that's one of their largest divisions. Okay. What's neat about this particular company, and you're going to see this as we go through the presentation, is that they are just not a tool collector, but they are an innovator. So they do buy out other companies. All right. And in fact, they call themselves not a tool company, but a science company. So when they buy out a tool, first and foremost, they say, where does this tool fit into our portfolio? And more importantly, once we buy this tool, we're not going to let it just you know, suck it dry and let it die in the vine. 
what we're going to do with this thing is we're going to integrate it in so that we have a workflow that's very viable for our customers. Okay, and I'll give a further example later on today. The big thing is, and I was talking to uh, my colleague Christopher Che about this, and I think it's really important to understand that Dassault does not own Altium Inc. Okay, uh, they are partners, and that's why when you open up SolidWorks PCB, you may say it's powered by Altium, and then people are saying, oh, Dassault must have up purchased them or something of that nature. That's not the case. Dassault and Altium are two separate companies, but they are partners, and then again, you're going to see why Altium decided to work with Dassault and partner up with them through this webinar. Okay, just another expectation. We're going to be discussing the differences from the use model. So obviously SolidWorks PCB has to be different from Altium Designer, otherwise there's no purpose of making a separate tool. But what we don't want you to do is confuse the fact that somehow uh, so the this uh, SolidWorks PCB tool is somehow inferior or that it has it's so stripped down it it's, uh, doesn't function. The fact of the matter is is that really 95% of the projects out there could be due be done in either tool and even that 5% is really questionable. I would say it's probably more like 99%. What you can do in SolidWorks BCB, you can do in Altium, okay, and vice versa. Now, uh, there's another polling question I'd like to throw at you here, and it's regarding ECAD. So the last one was about MCAD, which is the mechanical side. We'd just like to know of our, from our audience if you've had any experience on uh, the ECAD side of things. So we're going to open that uh, poll here right now. So a good portion of you that are attending here, uh, I'd say well over 75% from what I'm seeing, um, is um, definitely either expert or intermediate at this. So I'm going to be, though I'm definitely going to be talking to a lot of electrical folks about the mechanical side. Those who are on the mechanical side, um, I'm going to show you what uh, also the electrical side is in need of as well, because we're going to be talking about this concept of mechatronics here in a few minutes, and it really involves both sides. So thank you very much for that. All right, let's move on here. So you, if you are an Altium Designer user, by the way, the SolidWorks PCB tool uh, is very intuitive. In fact, in just a moment, I'm going to show you the two of them so you can see how similar they are to each other. So if you had to jump onto a SolidWorks PCB terminal, you'd probably be able to navigate and get through it and make changes on it in very, very little time. Uh, and if you're just starting something from scratch, you'd be able to do it probably in less than an hour. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the the... Uh, the two tools directly. And by the way, I put these two up here because what you're looking at is a screenshot from Altium Designer and another one from SolidWorks PCB. And as you can tell, it's not easy to tell which one comes from which. And believe it or not, the one on the left comes from SolidWorks PCB. The one on the right comes from Altium Designer. So let me uh, escape out of our presentation here so I can show you my screen. Click on that. There we go. So on the left side, I do have SolidWorks PCB up here. And I've also on the right side, I've got Altium Designer, we're using the exact same project. This is the range finder. If you've attended some of our webinars in the past, we're using the same one here. It's one of the ones that we developed here for our trainings and for our uh, processes here at 9.connect. So you're seeing that. So what I want to show you off the bat is that things look remarkably similar to each other. They have very much the same type of panels, even though there's a little bit of a difference in the symbol uh, symbology that they're using here to represent things. Uh, you're looking at the PCB docs. This is the layout tool aspect of it. So you can see that it's over here. Same thing on the Altium designer side as well. So the, the projects should pretty much look the same here. They pretty much use the same file format. So if you do want to go between one to the other, that's uh, very doable as well. How about 3D? Well, if I hit the three key in SOLIDWORKS PCB and I hit the three key in Altium designer, we're seeing the same thing. The mechanisms to move things around work the exact same as well. Okay, so we're seeing that on both sides here. So again, we're seeing very similar capabilities here. I'm gonna hit the two key here, and I'll hit the two key here to bring us back into the 2D mode. What about the schematics? Yep, just as you expected them, all right? They're gonna look pretty much the same way, all right? The primitives are gonna look the same. They're gonna be placed down the same or in very similar fashion here. In fact, I'm just gonna click here so you can see the dialog boxes between the two, okay? And so there you go um, over there. So obviously, Altium Designer is gonna have a few extra bells and whistles or features. Um, that are going to differentiate it from SolidWorks PCB. But again, I, what I, I want to emphasize too is that it doesn't make SolidWorks PCB a crippled tool. It's very, very fu functional and capable as well. Okay. So there you go there. Same thing with the PCB lib. I'll show that one very quickly. So here it is. Of course, if we hit the three key, we can render the, the 3D capabilities. And then here is your symbols, uh, which again, should look the exact same thing. So hopefully I've shown you at this point in time, the tools are 
very um, comparable to each other. They're capable of each other. If you want to start a project in SOLIDWORKS PCB, you can finish that project in SOLIDWORKS PCB. It's perfectly capable of generating the engineering documentation necessary to get you into manufacturing. So that's what we've got over here. And what I'm going to do is go back over to my slide deck. So let's get that going here from the current slide. So just a couple of notes for you. Uh, the file formats are the same between Altium Designer and SOLIDWORKS PCB. There's just one exception. But if you add a library file and you pull it into SOLIDWORKS PCB from Altium, it's going to work fine. If you do some work in SOLIDWORKS PCB and push it back to Altium, it's going to work just as well. Okay. The only one that's got a little bit of a difference, and it's not that big of an issue, is that uh, there's the PCB doc from Altium, and then there's the SW PCB doc that the SOLIDWORKS PCB uses. Um, and there had to be a few differences over here because of the functionality that PCB, SOLIDWORKS PCB provides that Altium doesn't necessarily do in its PCB doc. But nevertheless, they do import back and forth to each other just fine. You just do have to import them. Um, but it's a very, very simple procedure to do that, and you can use it. And as you saw on my screen over there, the project that we did in Altium Designer readily ported into SOLIDWORKS PCB. So. The hotkeys here, so SOLIDWORKS PCB by default does not work the same way as Altium Designer does with its hotkeys. However, there is a workaround. So if you have hotkeys that you're always hitting, and trust me, a lot of the viewing and zooming ones that I'm very familiar with, um, it would be nice to have those as well. So the way you can do that is there's a file that you can add to SOLIDWORKS PCB in its root directory, and it will allow you to use some of those key presses. So. The point is here is that we are dealing with similar capabilities, right? So hopefully I've proven that to you at least through a little bit of show and tell here. So what I want to do here is dispel this big myth that somehow SOLIDWORKS PCB is, is a watered down or crippled version of Altium Designer. It's not. This tool can do what Altium does. And conversely, what I want to ex express is that Altium Designer is not a bloated version of SOLIDWORKS PCB. Okay. And the reason I bring this up is because I know that these conversations are going on in some, I'm think on both sides, both on uh, those who are representing SOLIDWORKS PCB and on Altium Designer, in order to try to make the sale, we're, we're downgrading one to the other, and that's not the right thing. And if you're having this conversation with any of the sales reps, you're having the wrong conversation. And the analogy I can give you is that if you were to go into a, uh, into a, a car, you know, car dealership, and you're talking to somebody, and all they're doing is just saying dispirited, dispirited things about another car company or another brand, and they're just, uh, and they're just comparing based off of that. You're not really getting the whole story. A good sales individual at these car places is going to ask you, well, why are you here? What are you looking for? How did you find out about us? You want to try this thing out. These are the type of things that you'd want in that conversation. So it's not about uh, beating up on one or the other. What we're really talking about over here is addressing two different design flows, okay? two different design flows. So what Altium Designer is addressing is complex circuit design. That's what it's addressing. And you know, I'll talk a little bit more about this here in just a bit, but that's what they're dealing with here. And unfortunately, as I think many of us have learned through experience, uh, complex circuits are things that you learn through experience. And it's not something that we necessarily see or practice through academia okay? or even through a textbook. Uh, it's something that you practice time and time again as you go through each one of your projects. Whereas in SOLIDWORKS PCB, they are addressing something that's called the mechatronic element. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this because of its importance. So let me ask a polling question over here. This term mechatronics has been coming out a little bit more and more. And as a matter of fact, this past week, there was even um, an argument or a debate between uh, Zuckerberg uh, of Facebook and uh, Musk, of uh, obviously, of Tesla. And uh, they were talking about AI, and really what they were talking about, in a sense, is mechatronics. So I'm kind of curious to know if you've actually ever um, heard of these two. Actually, it looks like our poll got a little bit mixed up over here. So that's fine, though. We can, we can do this. So the polling question is, um, have you, um, in your design efforts, how have you gone back and forth between things? And that's fine. We can uh, definitely take a look at that. Okay, so almost 75% of you guys are using the step file capabilities, primarily the ones that Altium has introduced into the industry over here, and that's good. So at least from uh, from that point of view, in a, in a weird sense, again, I know the polling is a little bit off over here, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, in, a, in an odd sense, you've been doing mechatronics, and that's what I want to explain over here, and where SOLIDWORKS PCB comes into it. So if you're not familiar with the term, it's the simultaneous blending of the electrical and mechanical aspects of the design. And really, prior to 2008, this was a, a big issue. 
uh, you had basically separate tools for mechanical and electrical, like we do today, but they really were separate tools. They just didn't have a great way of communicating with each other. And if you could communicate with each other, you did it through 2D, right? You did it through DXF, DWG files. And uh, by the way, just as a, a little side note, prior to me working at Altium back in 2007, I worked in the defense industry. And I was working on a particular project which had a very specific mechanical need and had a very specific electrical need. So uh, at that time, they wouldn't let me touch the, uh, the layout side of it. We actually had a department where they had a, a pool of experts who did nothing but layout. And I was able to get one of the better, actually not the better, I think one of the best of the uh, mechanical guys that they had to offer. So all three of us got together and we communicated well with each other and there was a lot of good synergy and yet we still had to do a respin because unfortunately at that time, we couldn't even pass the accept DWG files to each other. We all had to agree with what the dimensions were and we still didn't get the dimensions right on the mechanical side and on the electrical side, so we actually had to go through a respin. Okay. So that, that's how crazy and difficult it was even prior to 2008. I'll talk about what happened there in 2008 in just a moment. But that's what we were dealing with. But even if you could pass something back and forth in the DXF DWG area, you were kind of limited because the electrical folks have primitives and the, those primitives have properties that are really important to the electrical side, which quite frankly have very little bearing on the mechanical side. Right, the, the layer of the copper, the net association, the connectivity to the next primitive. What are you connecting to? Are you connecting to a polygon pore? Are you connecting to a pad? Are you connecting to another trace? These things are really important to us uh, for our connectivity issues on the electrical side, not so much important on the mechanical side. All right, so what happened over there? We see what I'll call the first generation of true mechatronics coming out, and that's with Altium Designer, right? If you really look back at Altium Designer, what really propelled them to a tier one status? Well, it was really when they came out and said, we had to look at 3D, because they were doing it before, but it was clunky and difficult to use. And they said, we really, really looked back at this thing, and we saw that 3D could really help us communicate better with the mechanical world. So what, what did they create? They created step files that could be exported that represented both the board and the components. And they were able to import step files in to represent chassis and components as well. Now, they could import components before, but the big thing that they added to this was orientation of the step files. Because as, as you probably have all experienced here, if you've done this one point or another, the mechanical folks don't have a universal definition of origin. So a component would come in, it'd be upside down, it comes in off on its side, it needs to be rotated. And so what did we, what did Altium do about this? They said, let's make tools that make it very easy to correct that. And that's exactly what they did, okay? So it allowed a process for talking back and forth between the ECAD world and the MCAD world. So in the past, we had this big chasm between these two engineering disciplines, the mechanical side and the electrical side. Now we've got a bridge. At least it's a, still a chasm, but we still at least we have a bridge now that we can walk to make this effort a little bit easier to pass back and forth to each other. Uh, however, with this, there are always issues that kind of come up. So now... Really, I can summarize the first line over here as being an administrative thing. So this is great. I do something in Altium or now in SolidWorks PCB, right? I, I export this thing out. I, I communicate this to the mechanical individual. They take it in. They make their modifications to it. They export it back out. They communicate that to me. I've got to import it. I've got to make my modifications. So you can see this is a very, very administrative thing. And really, two things kind of got in the way of that. First and foremost, tracking it. Um, Actually, it should be the latest and greatest, but we need to track who has the latest one. And when multiple people have multiple copies of these things, you get a branching effect, and then you've got to figure out, well, who's got the latest and greatest, and who do we need to continue off of to keep this project moving? And then the big thing was file sizes. Uh, it, unfortunately, STEP is not an efficient format. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the MCAD side of things, they would rarely ever save anything out in STEP unless you told it to. They've got their own native formats that handle it much better. But STEP is universal and it works, but it's just not efficient. So that's one of the big reasons why Altium Designer does not put out copper, or does not put out the, uh, the silk, because the files just become massive, you know, a 20, 10, 20 gig files very easily if they have to put all that information out there. So that becomes really problematic, especially when you're trying to email things back and forth to a colleague. So those are the big issues that were kind of hindering this capability. So in now comes what I'll call the second generation mechatronics. And that is passing data in real time. So that's what SolidWorks PCB brings to the table over here is this ability to work in SolidWorks PCB, send off something over to SolidWorks because there's these uh, add-ons that you can put onto SolidWorks that allows it to communicate, uh, pretty much pull, pull and push between 
SOLIDWORKS PCB and through SOLIDWORKS CAD. And you can do these things in real time, so it reduces the delay. That's the big thing. So it's not as administrative as it was before. It's just a matter of doing something on the screen, and then you push this button say, and put a little note saying, okay, these are the changes that are made, or these are the things I'm requesting. I've pushed this over. And the individual on the SOLIDWORKS CAD side can just say, oh, okay, I got your message there. I'll push it. I'll, I'll pull it in. I'll make my mods, and I can push it back to you. Okay, and that can be all done without all these, <laughs> without importing and exporting and doing all of these administrative things. And the other thing too, of course, is that it controls the head revision. So one thing that comes with SolidWorks PCB is something called services, and that is to handle the head revision, which again becomes really mucked up when you've got multiple people handle multiple copies of a particular file. So that was the intention of that here. Okay, I want you guys to just kind of, um, think about the future here for a moment because what I want to bring to your attention is what I'll call third generation mechatronics and this is how we see it here at 9.connects this is one of the reasons why we're very excited about you know partnering with the so obviously because they've got this this tool that we we know and understand but what we see is their big picture as well now what I'm going to present to you again is from 9.connects it's nothing that the so has told us but from a logical point of view and what we see here at 9.connects for third generation mechatronics, and I gotta believe this will happen within the next decade, is we're gonna see simultaneous mechanical and electrical engineering design. So if you really think about it, the big problem we have right now is that we've got two separate domains. We've got the electrical domain and the mechanical domain. The second generation is gonna make it a lot easier to communicate between the domains. So we don't have a long bridge anymore. We, we've got a shorter bridge. And it's gonna get to the point that if we're gonna do these things, especially the artificial intelligence and the robotics, we're almost gonna to have to do these things simultaneously, okay? And that's where we see it. And that's why, again, I bring up this interesting conversation that just so happened to happen this past week between, if you haven't heard about it, it's between Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook talking about the positive aspects of artificial intelligence and Elon Musk uh, warning people about the negative aspects of it. Now, whether, whatever side you wanna be on on that, you can. The point I'm trying to make is that these are two very large companies and they are pioneers in technology. And if they're having a debate about this, that obviously indicates that's where they think the technology is going. All right. And, if, and now Google hasn't brought themselves into this here, but, you know, quietly they've been doing a lot of work in robotics. Even Amazon's been doing a tremendous amount of work in robotics. So a lot of people are seeing that the next generation of technology is definitely going to be robotics and artificial intelligence. And that's why we think in mechatronics is really important because I want you to consider this. Okay, on the left side, I have shown just a handful of key things that we have accomplished in the last 100 years. So we have the, um, the particle accelerator, this massive thing. I mean, just phenomenal, the amount of work that had to be put into this thing over here. So we can smash particles, we can build massive buildings, right? In fact, now they've got new ones where they think they can flex them back and forth so that everybody gets a really nice view of things. So you don't you just have to get one side of the building that gets a nice view and the other side that doesn't. Also, we've sent we've sent aircraft and you know we sent not just aircraft we've sent things into space onto different planets we put sent things onto the moon so that we can take pictures of them right so we're able to escape our own atmosphere and do these kind of things we also have a massive transportation system over here where you know in the past it used to take months to get from one side of the U S to the other side of the, uh, of the United States now you know really with our transportation system. Uh, you can do it in three to five days by car, right? Six hours by airplane. So we've taken months off of the transportation time and turned it into days and hours. On the electrical side of things, look at all the devices and appliances we enjoy. We now have an electrical grid which didn't even exist 100 years ago. We can even do things with uh, magnets and medical type of things like MRIs. And the technology just keeps on getting better and better and better all the time. One of the things I should have put out here is our communication, our ability to communicate with each other is just phenomenal as well. If something happens in this world, somewhere out there, as long as it gets onto, uh, it gets onto the World Wide Web, all of us can know about it within five minutes time, right? That, that's an incredible uh, feat of engineering. But I put this in the middle over here because one of the things is despite all of our really great innovations that we've done in the last hundred years, I still don't have Rosie the Robot. Now, for some of you who might not be familiar with Rosie the Robot, that was the Jetsons' housemaid in the, in the television show, The Jetsons. And I'm looking around, I got all these really cool things, but I'm the one still cooking dinner, and I'm the, still the one who's got to, you know, uh, clean up the house and all these other things along with my wife. So wh where is this? And the reason I bring this up over here is because in order to build Rosie the Robot, we have to have mechatronics. 
It can't just be primarily mechanical or primarily electrical, something of this nature. Artificial intelligence requires a 50-50 blend of the two. And that's why mechatronics is going to become so important in the next 10 years if artificial intelligence is where the technology is going to go. Okay. So what does SolidWorks bring to it? Let's get back over here to 2017. It's the second generation of mechatronics to life. This idea that, hey, we can push stuff from SolidWorks PCB into SolidWorks CAD and vice versa in a very reasonable period of time. Actually, very, very quickly. It's with the press of a button. Okay. What's the usage mo models for this? Well, if you own SolidWorks CAD, then SolidWorks PCB would obviously be the logical eCAD choice to, um, to complement this. If, by the way, you own no CAD, all right, what we would recommend is that SolidWorks PCB is perfectly capable of doing some levels of CAD in it. In fact, we did a webinar about this a little over a year ago called 3D without the ME. So we've done a number of webinars that are on our website. And if you want to view it, feel free to do so. It shows you the 3D capabilities of SolidWorks PCB and Altium Designer. And of course, if you own an eCAD tool along with SolidWorks PCB, you still may want to consider SolidWorks PCB because number one, it can import those things in, and number two, it gives you again this ability to go back and forth between SolidWorks PCB and SolidWorks CAD and a very, very easy flow. So that's what it's bringing here to the table. Um, I know that the polling questions are a little bit off, um, and I think our polling question now may be a little skewed because it was asked whether or not you know mechatronics, but we can put it still out there if we want. There. So now that you've heard about mechatronics, how do you feel about mechatronics? <laughs> so 7% um, of you, uh, you know, gave the honest truth until now really never heard of it. So that's, that's what we kind of figured is that there's still a portion of you out there who just probably have always kept yourself in the PCB domain, which not no fault of your own. That's where your job is. Um, but I, I probably haven't known that this was kind of coming about here. Um, some of you guys knew about or knew exactly what it was, and then there's people who've heard notions of it or just the word of it. So, well, hopefully that conversation we just had about the mechatronics gives you a feel for it there. All right. So um, let's talk about the Altium side of things, because what I've talked about was the use study for SolidWorks PCB. So where does Altium Designer fall into this? Well, it's talk where AD comes in is efficiency to the complex circuit process, okay, it's efficiency. And what I mean by that? Well, if you're doing things that are pretty advanced like flex rigid or high speed design, DDR memory layouts, uh, panelization, like you're the one handling the panelization rather than the fabricator, or embedded components where you're doing some interesting things where you're putting components on layers that are not uh, either the top or the bottom, but you're putting cavities in there, or you may even be looking at these newer generation fabrications, and I hope these come out soon, by the way, where you just call out the resistor and they can fabricate that resistor straight onto the board rather than calling out uh, a separate uh, component on the bill of materials. So I guess the short of it over here is that Altium Designer does bring efficiency to all of these type of processes that you see listed over here. But the key thing, again, I want to drive home is that SolidWorks PCB can do all of these things. So this list that you saw here is the one that you saw in the prior slide. And two things is that number one, 9.connects can certainly show you how to do these things if you're interested in doing them and you have SolidWorks and PCB. But more importantly, okay, these are not trivial design efforts. So if someone comes to you and says, well, SolidWorks PCB really can't do flex rigid. Well, number one, yes, it can. And number two, do you even know what flex rigid is, right? So that's, that's why we were really concerned about what are, you, what are you trying to get with your tool over there? Because some of these things that people might want, they definitely require experience and they definitely require knowledge. And I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to keep driving home this point. A lot of this stuff is not taught in academia. You learn these things by doing them. And they usually take a couple of iterations. Just to give a story, for example, I was talking to a colleague or a friend of mine. Actually, it wasn't a colleague. He was actually an old friend of mine. I've known him for years. Um, he is an expert in PCB design. He's been doing it for over 30 years. He's here in San Diego. Uh, and he's an independent um, consultant. He does not work for us here at 9.connects, but um, he's a good friend of mine. And uh, he was telling me about doing a flex rigid, and I forgot the name of it, what he was trying to do, but it took eight iterations. So if this individual is an expert in this and he's already feeling pretty comfortable with flex rigid, but they were doing something really, really unique with this, um, and again, I forgot the name of what they call it, some type of weave that they were doing along with it, um, and they had to just kind of get it to the right to the right weave so that they got the proper bend on it, but at the same time got the proper impedances. It took them eight iterations. So if they're struggling with it, we're, you know, just want to forewarn you that if you're trying to get into these things over here, uh, it, it could get complicated. So 
just understand that. Altium certainly has the power to do these things, and they make it a lot easier. But it's not just about the tool capabilities. It's also about your knowledge and capabilities as well. I throw this in here because I thought this is kind of kind of an interesting way of looking at an analogy. I would love to have a truck like this. Okay, cool looking. I bet it'd be a lot of fun to have. But do I need this? Because you know what? If I'm never going to take this thing off road and all of them are going to do is highway miles on it, then number one, I'm not putting it to its intended purpose, and number two, I'm going to put a lot of money into it and uh, for something that I really just don't need here. And that's that's what the, the analogy I can uh, bring you at this point. Of course, if you're using Altium Designer and you're comfortable with it and it's working, that's great. But for those who are looking for a tool there that's uh, got um, just as much bang for the buck, you know, SolidWorks PCB is capable of doing it as well. All right, let me talk about 9.connects here for a couple of minutes. So what do we bring to the table here? So we talked about Altium Designer, we've talked about SolidWorks PCB. How do we get into all this here? Well, we bring experience and knowledge to the game here. We started as an Altium VAR in 2009, and we ended as an exclusive North American uh, trainer for Altium in 2015. So we're no longer their official uh, Altium North American trainer. And by the way, it's not that we wanted to pull away from Altium. Um, Altium just had plans of their own, and they just, you know, the contract allowed them to fire us. And so uh, that was, uh, that's how that whole thing kind of worked out. But nevertheless, uh, just because uh, we don't have that uh, business relationship with Altium anymore, it doesn't mean that we don't know Altium. Altium designer. Our staff is composed of several former Altium employees, I myself being one of them, and some expert users, guys uh, who, who have used the tool for years and uh, really know the tool inside and out. And we do jokingly call ourselves the Axeman, meaning Altium's ex employees, uh, just because um, it's just, you know, we had that type of camaraderie with each other long after we worked there. Okay. What do we do then? So, uh, one of the things that we have built our reputation on is training and services. So, in in terms of training SolidWorks PCB, we can certainly uh, train you up on it and get you ramped up on it if necessary. We also do our own training for Altium designers. So we're not using their stuff. We've created our own product. We have a boot camp, which is an introductory course. We also have our advanced uh, training, which we call special ops for those features in Altium designer that um, newbies probably would not be able to take advantage of, but those who are getting deep into the tool uh, would probably want to use for their efficiency. We also have a tool, uh, probably a, a uh, training called the PCB Fundamentals. And this is a really important one that we came up with and people are still taking it. We really appreciate that. And we've seen it's really growing because PCB process is not taught in academia. And a lot of things that we learn, we learn on the job. And unfortunately, we learn the hard way through respins uh, and other frustrations and schedule slips. And we don't really want that. But the idea behind this is to look at each aspect of the process and to look at it from how do I make this more efficient? How do I make this more readable? How do I make this more complete? All right. And I'm, in fact, I'm going to show you a testimonial about this here. And in fact, I'm going to jump down to it here in just a moment. This came in today. I threw this in about 15 minutes before we started this presentation. We actually did the PCB fundamental class uh, last week. Christopher said, hey, we just got a phenomenal review on this. And I wanted to throw this up at you, but this is what they, you know, what they said, and this is what I really want to drive home. This was never taught at my university, and I had to learn about the PCB process myself. I think all of us have been there, just because this, this, this particular process just is something you got to learn. It's an on-the-job type of thing. It's, uh, you know, for those people who are on the mechanical side thinking about going over the electrical side, yes, circuit theory is a big help, but you can see that uh, all of us have had to just kind of pick up the tool and grind through it. And so if you're interested on, from the, the mechanical folks, interested on the electrical side, this is a really great introduction uh, to the PCB process and you'll learn a tremendous amount from it. We've also heard the call and the need for a high-speed layout uh, class, and we, so we are actively developing that, so that should be out in sometime in 2018, okay? And then also we, call, we also have what we call our stealth training. So if you're interested in doing some cabling, but you don't want a full up tool on doing it, we can show you how to do that. Believe it or not, here at 9.connects, we have some expertise in the vault because we used to sell it prior to Altium going direct with it. But uh, I spent a lot of time in the vault. I understand its methodology. I talked to those people who developed the vault. So if you did purchase a vault from Altium and you're still struggling with it, let us know. We can assist you. When it comes to SPICE, both SOLIDWORKS PCB and Altium Designer have the SPICE engine in it. If you're interested in um, understanding how that engine works, we can assist you with that. And of course, with library methodology, this seems to be the bane of everybody's process. And so we can uh, certainly assist you in that, both in methodology and those things that you can do so that there is consistency in uh, your libraries. Okay, so I already showed you guys this one over here. 
what about the so here? Well, why did we decide to work with them? Because Again, they are a powerhouse in these things like 3D mechanical and simulation. We really do believe that they're going to be the ones who are going to push the next generation of tools out there. Just as another example, uh, they recently acquired something called CST, which is a 3D field solver. And for those who are not familiar with 3D field solvers, these are really necessary if you want to have accurate high-speed design simulation results. All right? Uh, and so the fact that they were willing to invest in that means what? It means that they're very, very interested in the electrical side of things. And so it'll be not just another product for them to sell, but it's going to be something they're going to integrate so that their electrical offerings are going to become more and more robust. Okay? And of course, on our site over here, being experts in the PCB design flow, that's why they came to us uh, to seek uh, some additional assistance so that they can uh, become more proficient on the electrical side of things over here. So does that mean we're in the tool selling game or why are we in it? Because we can't deny that the EDA aspect plays a major central role in all of this, right? If you're going to, I can talk about specifications, I can talk about documentation, but in the middle of it all, there's schematics, there's layouts, and there's libraries. And, you know, it's tough to just talk about someone's tool as opposed to being able to show you the tool and then support the tool thereafter. And this allows us to provide a complete solution to you. And the big thing is, and then we, we know we've been ridiculed about this, and I think it's important because the industry has a lot of people who call themselves VARs, but they don't live up to it. But we really do believe in value add, and that is to continue to deliver on the monthly webinar topics and to provide training, consulting, and services as well. Okay. So what does this mean with you? What we want you to do at the end of the day is that if you ever want to have a conversation about us with us, about something that you're dealing with in the PCB process, feel free to do it. And as a matter of fact, that we get no kickbacks or any type of appreciation from Altium, if we think Altium Designer is right for you, we're going to send you over to Altium. Right? We're not going to sell you on a tool that's going to disappoint you. Right? If you're doing certain things and we feel that you have the capability of doing those things, we're going to get you to the right tool here. Ultimately, we want you to make a decision that you won't regret and that you'll come back to us if you have problems in the future as well. The big thing is that supporting after the sale, right? You're making a big purchase, so you're expecting something to come along with that afterwards. So there's training that we can provide to help you ramp up, consulting to assist you in configuration management. One of the bigger problems you have with these tools is that when you got two or more people working on it, everybody's on their own page, and you want to get everybody together so that there's some uniformity uh, to what you're doing. Also, support to assist you with tool-specific questions over there. So you know, if you purchase SolidWorks PCB from us, uh, we we are the ones who are first line of support, okay, to to assist you with that, and then also services to assist you as you battle against tight deadlines. Because all too often, most of us get into a situation where not only do you have to learn the tool, but we got to learn it fast enough to get through the actual project. So if you find yourself in one of those tough uh, situations, we can certainly help you through our services. Okay, just a couple of announcements here about Nine Dot Connects. We are going on the road. It's been a while since we've been able to do this. But we are going to do it, and what we're going to do is talk about the rise of the mechatronics age. So I'm going to go into a lot more detail about it during our lunch and learn. Uh, so if you're interested in this, please check out our website. It's 9.connects.com, solidworks-pcb-roadshow. So it shows the, the dates, our, uh, our agenda, and also the sign-up is there as well. So there will be 12 cities throughout the U.S. We're going to start in September. And by the way, this is a pretty good lunch. So this is not a pizza and soda deal over here. You're actually going to get a really nice lunch for this. Free of charge, you just need to show up. And the big thing is this is not going to be a dog and pony show. Uh, you know, here at 9.connects, if we're going to talk about something, we like talking about processes, not tools. So it's not going to just be uh, an hour and a half of just talking about um, all the features in a particular tool. We really want to talk about the process and where the tool sits in that particular process. What we want you to do is walk away thinking about the future, and not only the future, but your future as well. And I'm going to put this out there. You know, no one likes to change, okay? We don't like changing here at 9.connects. We are a PCB-centric organization. But I can tell you time and time again, prior to us moving on here and looking at SolidWorks PCB, we've hit the mechanical wall all too often. I'm like, look, there's something bigger going on over here, and we can't just live in our little domain of the, the PCB, okay? That the, if we're going to go into the next generation of mechatronics, we've got to know the mechanical side as well. And so, uh, trust me, it, it, there's growing pains on our side as well, probably. And what we want to do is make sure that other people know, because look, anytime the domain changes, jobs are lost, but jobs are gained as well. And we just want you to know what's going up there, because um, you know, uh, whether we like it or not, those forces of change are always in play. Okay. And then, of course, for our monthly webinars, for those people who are new to us, we do these every month, and we've been performing them for really the last four years. 
uh, and I think there's only one month we ever skipped out of that, and uh, it just because um, of some timing things that we were trying to do and trying to get the PCB fundamentals up and running. But we've done this for the last four years. But more importantly, um, we do things on very timely topics. In fact, it's kind of unusual for us to do one of this nature over here, but given the need to uh, introduce what we're doing here with Dassault and SolidWorks PCB, uh, that's why this is a little more on the business side of things than really on the technical side of things. But we generally like to keep it technical. So they're usually the last Wednesday of the month. If you want to see the ones we've done in the past, you can easily see that on our website. We have a whole list of them. And these are the type of topics that we do all the time. So things like uh, now there'll be uh, the uh, SWPCB or Altium related type of things. So if there's a feature in the tool that we think is being underutilized or people don't use it uh, because they don't really understand it, uh, then we'll talk about those type of things. Uh, libraries and database management is always a big thing, so every so often we'll talk about a feature of that. High speed is really the bane of everyone right now, as the old joke set goes. Um, either you have high speed design issues or you don't know you have high speed design issues, right? Uh, that's it, This is a big topic for all of us. Design for manufacturing, again, since there's no academia teaching it, uh, there's things that we can learn to make the manufacturer's lives easier so we can get through it without respins. And lastly, of course, now that we're starting to get into the MCAD side of things, I got to be perfectly honest with you, I'm starting to see a lot of terms I don't know. And I think it's important that as we start looking into the MCAD side of things, that we start bringing those terms to life so that we can, on the electrical side, certainly have an intelligent conversation uh, with the mechanical folks. Okay. Our next two webinars are going to be held by uh, Sean Kelly. Just to let you know, in August, he's going to do a webinar on what is high speed design. A lot of times we get a question of is what speed is are we dealing with high speed design? And Sean has alluded to this in the past, but he wants to go into more detail about it that it's not just necessarily the frequency of the clock, there's other factors involved with that, and that's what he wants to discuss. The second thing he's also going to talk about is what constitutes simulation, because uh, Sean also is big on, on simulation. He knows how to run hyperlinks, he's run Ansoft tools, these are a very high end tools. So he knows what he's looking for. He, he, that people are trying to get information that maybe you may not necessarily have to get out of it. Should you buy these tools? Should you not? What are you expecting from these tools? So that's what he's trying to um, bring forth in the September webinar. Okay. So that's what we've got coming up over here. So that is, uh, that's basically our presentation here on uh, SolidWorks PCB, uh, this month's webinar. We'll see you next month. You take care. <laughs>